the assistance from USID, it came in at the time when we really needed it. When the Kenya government had difficult challenges with donors, one program that never suffered was our partnership with USAID. Your much gratitude uh, to those Americans who had the vision and who worked with our own politicians to make that lift uh, possible. Forever, USAID should live and grow and multiply. This film is really marks the celebration. Uh, it marks 50 years of partnership uh, between Kenya and the United States. Um, and I hope that this film will show a couple of different things, the variety of programs and activities that have occurred over the last 50 years uh, and the impact that they have had uh, on Kenya, uh, on the Kenyan people. Pamoja Tuta Faulu, together we will succeed. In 1992, political change in Kenya brought the first ever multi-party elections. With it emerged a vibrant civil society. USAID saw this as a unique window to work with Kenyans, strengthen democracy and governance, and advance the country's reform agenda. Invisible, intangible, democracy takes time and has many layers. The disputed presidential election in 2007 and the violent unrest that followed re-emphasized the need for stronger government democratic institutions and checks and balances. The U.S. funds civil society groups, trains election observers, and provided technical assistance to register voters and manage a free, fair, and peaceful constitutional referendum in 2010. Take the Kenyan parliament, which was once a weak institution and the rubber stamp for Kenya's powerful executive branch. Enter the Speaker of the House, Kenneth Marende, lawyer and former member of parliament, adept at navigating this highly politicized environment. The Kenyan public that elects members of parliament to represent them have a stake in what parliament does. Until recently, most Kenyans had no idea whether their elected representatives ever show up to work and vote. Speaker Marende saw the need for greater accountability. With USAID assistance, the debates now go live on local TV. Seats are rarely empty. I'm glad that uh, uh, Kenyans received it with a lot of enthusiasm. As we speak today, I think that is one of the most popular programs uh, on, 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 on Kenyan media. And if you try to remove live broadcasts today, I think there will be riots in the streets of uh, several cities in this country. With the assistance of USAID and its on-the-ground partner, State University of New York, Albany, Speaker Marende led the effort to make Parliament an effective check on the executive, with members able to interrogate bills and budgets tabled by the government. But strengthening democracy is not only done in a government building. Three years ago, the Rift Valley was the epicenter of ethnic violence that followed the disputed presidential elections. Since then, USAID has been working at reconciling communities and preventing future conflict. A USAID project called Rift Valley Local Empowerment for Peace is using sport to restore community ties and teach conflict resolution. In this slum in the city of Eldoret, teams are from different tribes. Playing soccer is intense, continuous, creates space to meet at a different level. It builds trust. During the post-election violence, Nelson Katosha's home was burned by gangs. He and other youths fought off their attackers. Town clashes happened to Mkoa Madui, the fifth room pira, he met with a pamoja. Mal to metoka na yani bad, sai mal to mefika. That's what nos kuresti put to get us idea to put ya pamoja. Since 2009, 150 soccer teams have been formed in Eldoret, teaching more than 3,000 youths. The aim? To create a critical mass of youth who can say no to violence.